make sure I am hooked up properly and I want you guys to say hi so I know that you're here. I know the other day I was having a hard time seeing comments um, so who was with me. So those of you who are joining me live or even if you're watching the replay right now, go ahead and comment, say hi, um, your name and where you're from. I like seeing where people come from. You know, I live here in Delray Beach, Florida. So I'm in South Florida, just between Boca Raton and West Palm. But I like to see where all of you guys are from. So go ahead and comment below where you're from. Maybe, um, you know, what you want to learn about today, you know, in terms of nutrition. I am going to be talking all about nutrition today. One of my most favorite topics to talk about, all right? And just so you guys know, I was super excited to actually put on a dress today. I'll go ahead and stand up and show you guys. This is Lily Pulitzer for Target. I am a bargain shopper for those of you who don't know me. And I got this at uh, Target when they had their Lily Pulitzer sale. I was there at 8 a.m. <laughs> ready to buy. Um, but these earrings I'm wearing, I actually got these. These are my wedding day earrings. My husband and I celebrated our five-year wedding anniversary a few weeks ago. And I'm so happy that I can still wear my wedding earrings from my special wedding day. So I'm super excited. I wanted to kick off with one of my favorite outfits because I'm super, super pumped to share why food freedom is a life-changing way to eat and to transform your body, whether it's to lose weight, if you want to maintain your weight, if you want to gain weight, whatever your goals are, whatever your health and or weight loss goals are, food freedom right here is, I believe, is the best solution, okay, for everybody. And those of you who don't know me, I'll give you a little bit of background about me. I am a certified personal trainer. I have several certifications in nutrition, and most of my background is in sports nutrition. So I'm very, very um, passionate about showing people, you know, how to exercise and eat properly to fuel their workouts, but also how to recover from their workouts. And then those of you who don't like to work out, you know, how we can still eat in a way that you can still lose the weight that you want, right? So I will share all of that with you guys over the next few days. But like I said, guys, I see more of you are joining me. So go ahead and comment. I can't see the comments for some reason. Um, but what I'm going to do, just so you guys know, um, how today is going to work. I am going to kind of go through my lesson today. Those of you who know me, I was a high school teacher. Oh, there's my sister. Hi. Oh, thank you. I'm glad you like my job. Um, I was a high school teacher for 10 years, right? And so a lot of my students, we would joke around. They're like, Miss A. I and mean, then I was Mrs. A. I was always an A last name. You know, they're like, you either are super dressed up, like in a dress and a skirt, or you're in like, you know, jeans and a, a t-shirt from school, right? Like I was all or nothing with my outfit. Um, but today I wanted to dress up. So thank you for liking my dress. I appreciate that. Um, anyway, how today is going to work. So I'm going to talk about nutrition today. As you guys saw on the agenda in the group, tomorrow I talk about fitness. Wednesday is mindset and motivation. And Thursday is accountability. And what I want to be really clear about, guys, is... Food freedom, okay? Yes, I'm gonna talk about all the kind of food we eat today, but in order for the system to work, it is a four-step process. And today, I'm gonna to go through step one of the four-step process to food freedom. So I'll talk about nutrition. I'm gonna go through my lesson, as I was saying, right? Um, and then I'll answer any questions at the end of my presentation, because most likely I will be answering a lot of the questions that will come up, okay? So I will make sure I hop on here and make sure I answer any of your questions. So just comment. Um, if you want to comment during my lesson, that's totally fine. And then I'll make sure I answer the questions at the end. This will be about a 30 minute training. Might go a little bit over, um, but we'll go ahead and jump right into what food freedom is. Okay. So I get this question a lot. Well, what does that look like? You know, how is it possible? that I'm able to eat all the foods that I love. Hey, Christine, eat all the foods that I love and still you know, lose weight, right? And I want you guys to understand that it's totally possible. You know, and I said this last week in my all or nothing mindset training that so much of the fitness industry, and I told you guys I'm a personal trainer, I've worked in multiple gyms over the course of my career, I work privately now, because um, a lot of the gym, you know, culture is like all or nothing, right? You're eating a super strict diet, you're counting everything, measuring everything, um, and you're going to lose a bunch of weight, but then like what happens after, right? Like how do we sustain these results, right? And that there's a gap there. It's like, okay, I'm going to do really, really well, and then I'm going to fall off, and then what? No one really talks about the balance, right? And that is exactly what 
food freedom is about. And that's why I created this system because I saw there was such a need for this, right? And so what I want you guys to understand about food freedom, and I know there are so many diets out there, right? You know, keto says you can't have carbs and then you have, um, let me think of another one. You know, starch solution has lots of different ways to eat starches. Like there's so many different diets out there. What I believe in what any dietitian, with any nutritionist, anyone that has any real knowledge in nutrition will tell you is that you must eat all of the macronutrients, okay, for the most balanced, healthy diet, okay? A well-balanced diet is everything. And one of my favorite dietitians that I worked with years ago, what she always said, and I love this, has resonated with me so much, if a diet is stressful, it's counterproductive. So oftentimes, you know, I'll see people that are meticulously counting their carbs. Like, I can only have 30 carbs a day. I can only have 40 grams per day. You know, oh my God, what if I go over? And that stresses people out, right? And like, like I said, if a diet is stressful, it's counterproductive. You are least likely to lose weight on a diet if it is stressing you out, right? If you're meticulously tracking or if you're feeling you can't have certain foods, right? You can't have fats. You can't have carbs, right? A lot in the fitness industry, a lot of it's high carb, low fat, right? So that's why they're going for egg whites and lean turkey breasts and lean chicken. That's super dry and disgusting, right? So there's all these extremes, right? So the best way to eat, you guys, is by eating all of the macronutrients. So that's what food freedom is, number one. It's eating fats, carbs, protein. And actually, guys, the fourth macronutrient is alcohol. And people don't know that. That alcohol is actually considered an entirely different macronutrient, okay? So I'll talk a little bit about that today too, right? And those of you who know me, I love my wine, I love champagne, I like tequila. Um, so yes, I do drink. I drink in moderation, I don't go overboard. Um, but when I work with people, I don't take foods away from them. They are not restricted from drinking or from having carbs or fats or whatever it is, okay? Um, I'm also a plant-based eater, but that's something that I choose to do. It's not something I tell everybody to do, right? I want people to eat the way they want. That's what food freedom is about. All right, what food freedom is also, guys, it's not counting calories or measuring strictly, right? Like I don't, I don't recommend using food scales um, or you know tracking every calorie, right? Using apps like MyFitnessPal to make sure you're getting you know 1,600 calories a day or you know sticking to a certain range because that is you know not the long term play, right? And food freedom is designed for the long term, right? So if you go on vacation, if you are going to a birthday party, if you um, have a barbecue coming up on the 4th of July, for example, right? And you're eating food that you did not prepare, it's hard to tell how many calories are in that food or what ingredients they're using. So that's why, you know, counting calories and strictly measuring and relying on that is difficult, right? For the long term. It can be great for a short term meal plan. I'm not saying that, you know, measuring is not good in the beginning, but you can't do it for the rest of your life, right? So the food freedom is about knowing what portions look like. It's about understanding roughly, you know, how much protein per meal and carbs and fats and all that. Okay, so being able to eyeball it and be like, okay, I know how I'm gonna eat this meal, right? Or how much should be in this meal. That's food freedom, okay? Um, food freedom is, like I was saying earlier, when you go out to eat, food freedom is going to a restaurant and ordering foods that you love and having confidence that you can eat that food and it's not going to sabotage your weight loss results, right? Or whatever your, your goal is, okay? Um, there are so many people that I've talked to, even clients that when they first worked with me, they were like, well, I, you know, I feel bad going to Cheesecake Factory and ordering pasta or getting a piece of cheesecake. Um, and that's terrible. Like, I really started Food Freedom because I love to eat. I'm Italian. I am Puerto Rican. My husband is Turkish, right? We love all kinds of food. Mediterranean is my absolute favorite by far, um, naturally. And I never want someone to feel bad about eating pasta or going out to dinner or going to a family event. Um, and so I don't want you guys to go to restaurants and feel guilty. So you can, um, when you're eating food freedom, you can go to a restaurant and order the pasta. You know, if you want to get chicken parm, that's not off limits. There are no off limits food, all right? Um, and you can go to a party, right? Or a bridal shower or a wedding and feel confident and excited 
to eat the foods there, right? I love wedding cake. Those of you who work with me, like I love sweets, but I love, love wedding cake. And it's so funny, I was talking about my earrings earlier for my wedding, um, but when I got married five years ago, I wasn't really in a cake phase. Like I actually had cookie dough shipped from LA to Key West where I got married, um, cause my husband and I love cookie dough. Well, I guess I love cookie dough, he could care less. Um, but I love, love cookie dough, I still do. But over the last few years, I've been to so many weddings that I like cannot wait until cake is served at the end of the night. I look forward to it. I should be on four weddings just to taste the cake. Um, so I don't want you guys, no one that I work with who practices food freedom, I never want you to feel bad about having cake at a wedding. Okay, or having you know a little too much tequila like me sometimes at a wedding whatever so that's what you know food freedom is the guilt-free eating and being able to enjoy those foods for those special occasions okay um also letting go of this idea of good foods and bad food oh well cake is bad so i can't eat it oh alcohol is bad i'm not allowed to drink um, oh, pasta? Like, no way. I can't eat pasta. I hear this all the time. And it's so interesting that when I first work with people, I'm like, well, what breads am I allowed to eat? And like, what pastas am I allowed to eat? And this whole word allow, that is the complete opposite of what freedom is. It's like you're back in school. Am I allowed to sit here, Miss A? Am I allowed to, you know, um, I'm trying to think, am I allowed to sit with this group, right? And I don't like that allow like that just means there's rules right and rules are the opposite of freedom so we have to let go of this idea of good foods and bad foods and of course that comes down to, to culture right and we've been told for years and years that carbs are bad or fats are bad years before that right that's what you know Atkins taught us that carbs are bad and before that in the 80s it was like fat is bad so it's crazy everything's been told is bad right? And it, we never really focus on what's healthy, right? So instead of focusing on good foods and bad foods, what food freedom is, is focusing on less, eating less of the quote unquote less healthy foods and more of the healthy foods, right? So that's what food freedom is. Less and more, not good and bad. Make sure you write that down. And if you're not taking notes yet, I highly recommend that you do. This is a rough outline, but you're gonna be filling in the outline with my comments here, right? And as I said, if you have questions, go ahead and type them in the comments or you can jot them down on your piece of paper and I'll make sure I answer them by the end of the training, okay? So again, I'll say that again, there's no such thing as good foods and bad foods. There's less foods and more foods. The only exception to that, guys, is if you have a severe allergy. I want to talk about that in a little bit here, but, you know, food allergies, um, you know, if you're diabetic, I mean, that's different if you have any kind of, um, you know, chronic illness or autoimmune disease, anything like that, that's completely different, but I'll get to that in a little bit here, okay? Um, something else too with food freedom, and I'm actually going to talk more about this on Wednesday with the mindset training, which is my favorite topic. I love nutrition, but mindset is my favorite these days. Um, recreating your relationship with food, and this does stem from the you know good food and bad food because a lot of people have certain you know approaches to food or certain you know expectations of food because they think it's bad or good, right? But oftentimes we just have this really negative relationship with certain foods, like potato chips, for example. I can't tell you how many clients I've heard say, I can't eat potato chips, or I can't buy potato chips, because I can't just have like a serving. I can't just have two servings. I, can, I will only eat the whole bag. Same thing with ice cream. I had a client tell me once, like, I can't have ice cream in my house, but I will eat the whole pint or the whole half gallon every single time. Um, I used to be the same way, guys, with, um, I said the other day, Monster Trail Mix. Monster Trail Mix, gummy bears, cookie dough, peanut butter M&Ms, you name it, I've had it, I've been there. And so what happens is food freedom helps us create this new relationship with food. Again, we no longer look at, you know, I can't have ice cream, I can't have potato chips, I can't have these trigger foods, right? My Weight Watchers people, you know what I'm talking about, those trigger foods, no longer do we say that. We create this new relationship with food so that we can eat those foods. I choose to eat this and I choose to have this much and this is why. That's what food freedom is about. And like I said, I'll discuss more of that on Wednesday of this week. But I do want to say when it comes to nutrition, we do have to work on our relationship with food so we don't look at it as, as good and bad. And that trigger food is no longer a trigger. Okay. Um, what food freedom also is, guys, it's not worrying about following a meal plan. 
Oh, I hate meal plans. Comment below if you followed a meal plan before, which I'm sure a lot of you in this group have. Um, I know if I followed several before, I used to write them all the time and give them to my personal training clients that wanted nutrition support as well. And when I first started out doing nutrition, that's all I did. I was just give meal plans because that's what I was taught to do. I thought that's how I was helping people. And maybe I was helping people for a short period of time, but I was not helping them for the long term, right? So. Food freedom is not following a strict meal plan. Like you have to eat at this time, this time, this time, you know, three to five or three to six, whatever it is these days, one to six maybe if you're doing like severe intermittent fasting. Um, you know, you're not eating at a certain time. There's no required foods. You know, you don't have to cook these long intricate recipes with tons of ingredients. If you're only cooking, um, that's not what food freedom is. Food freedom is choosing what foods you eat, what recipes you try, what foods you buy at the grocery store, um, what you order at restaurants. If you're following the meal plan, there is no eating out on a meal plan, right? Most likely, right? Especially if you're macro counting, forget it. It's nearly impossible to eat out at a restaurant. So food freedom is not following a meal plan, right? And lastly, food freedom, guys, is eating on a, a in your budget, okay? So for example, another complaint that I've heard, and I don't want to say it's a complaint, that's the wrong word. Um, another concern that I hear is, well, you know, I, I, someone said this to me yesterday actually, that she worked with a dietitian and the, the meal plan that she was given was so expensive. And I said, what do you mean by expensive? And she said, well, I had to buy everything organic. I had to eat certain foods and like certain brands. And um, I just felt like I had no options. And it was just like so expensive and I had to go to Whole Foods for everything and I don't live near Whole Foods and even if I did like the you know the prices are so expensive and I get that I get that you guys like back in the day a couple you know years ago I used to get all my stuff from Whole Foods because I thought I had to do that to be healthy and then I was like I want a teacher salary and I'm like, I can't do this. Like, you know, my husband too, we would call it whole paycheck. I'm sure a lot of you guys do that too. I will say whole food prices have come down though. Um, but the truth is guys, that, that's not realistic. That's not sustainable. So eating in oh, your budget is super important. And I realize that. And so I never want someone to feel as if they can't afford to eat healthy. That is such a misconception that one of my biggest goals this year, actually in 2020, um, and forever is to negate that, okay? Because you can eat healthy on a very tight budget. And I love budget soft shopping, and I told you guys before, Lily for Target, woo woo, I love Target. Okay, so hope you guys understand that. So I want a little bit of audience interaction here. I gotta move it up along, I'm already 17 minutes in. Um, comment below guys, what is food freedom? In your own words, okay? Comment below here in the chat, you know, what is food freedom? In one sentence, what is it? I know I just said a lot of things to you in terms of what food freedom is, but if you could just summarize in one sentence, what is food freedom? All right, so I wanna see what you guys are writing um, and then I'll move onward, right? Because I want you guys to make sure you understand. So comment below what food freedom is. All right, maybe I'll wait until at the end I'll look at the comments, okay. What I want you guys to understand what food freedom is not. This is really important too, because I don't want people to get the wrong idea about food freedom. So food freedom is not eating unlimited quantities of whatever food you want. So that doesn't mean that, you know, yes, I said cake is, I want you to have cake at a wedding, but that doesn't mean you can have cake seven days a week, you know, or you can have like four pieces of cake, right? Or I mentioned tacos, like I had tacos yesterday with my husband, we love tacos, you know, but I'm not saying you can eat tacos, like those kind of tacos, you know, four or five of them, or give me a big number, whatever, every single day, every single meal, right? So it doesn't mean, you know, eating as much as you want, whatever you want. That's not what food freedom is, right? There is a balance we have to strike. There is a special strategy we have to employ eating these foods in a way to reach your goals, especially if weight loss is your goal. Weight gain, maybe you can get away with more, obviously, um, but you wanna, if you wanna gain weight in a healthy way, there's a certain strategy to that as well, okay? Um, food freedom is not disregarding um, you know, new, proper nutrition and your health, okay? Health first, weight loss second, and both with strategy. That's always what I say. 
Christine, eating what you want, when you want in moderation. Exactly. Yeah. And I'll get into the moderation part here in a little bit. Um, so eating what, you know, health first, weight loss second, both with strategies, is what I always say. So for example, guys, um, if you love cheese, okay, but every time you eat it, you are so sick, right? Like you're vomiting, you have to run to the bathroom, whatever. You might not want to eat cheese so often, right? So, you know, I don't want you to misinterpret this as like, well, Kristen said I should have cheese whenever I want. Um, no, right? Or if you know you're allergic to dairy, for example, or you're allergic to nuts, or, you know, you really love tacos and you love meat, but, you know, you know that you shouldn't be eating that for whatever reason. A lot of times, guys, like beef, and I'm plant-based, I'm not being biased here, but I've had clients that told me they've had, like, bloating and gas issues, and when I talked to them, I learned they were eating a lot of red meat, and, and ground beef especially can cause a lot of bloating, right? Um, so you want to listen to your body and listen to your body's cues and not be eating foods that don't serve your body. Okay. So, um, and I want you guys when food freedom is eating, you know, in a healthy way, in moderation, right? Not just eating cake and ice cream all the time. Um, ignoring your body's natural responses. So you don't want to ignore your body's natural responses to that too. Um, food freedom is not designed for rapid weight loss. I want to be really clear about that too, because most people come to me because they have tried every diet in the past. Okay. And they've either lost weight and then gained it all back, or they've never been able to stick to something because they felt so deprived. You know, that was typically the story that I hear. Um, and then, so they want something that's realistic. They want something where they don't feel deprived. And so that's why I say, okay, like I'm a good fit for you. I can show you how to do that, right? My clients average about one to three pounds a week, sometimes more depending on, you know, their, their weight, their starting weights, um, or just some, their, everyone's body changes differently, right? So my clients average one to three pounds a week. But, you know, if someone comes to me and says, you know, I want to lose 15, 20 pounds this month. Right? That's not what food freedom is not designed for that. Because I don't care what anyone tells you, you cannot be eating cake, pizza, tacos, ice cream, and lose 20 pounds in a month, you know, realistically or healthily, right? Um, so food freedom is not designed for super quick, rapid weight loss. And then you're like, okay, now what? Right? This is the long haul, long-term plan. That's what this is. This is not a quick fix. Okay. Um, food freedom is not focusing only on food and nothing else. That's why this is a four day training, okay? Um, tomorrow's fitness, Wednesday is motivation and mindset, and Thursday's accountability. So you can't just expect to eat pizza and tacos and drink all the wine, you know, wine and all these things, and then you're gonna just lose weight like that, right? There is multiple steps to it, so make sure you are here for the remaining trainings, okay, over the next couple of days. All right. Why it works, I'm gonna to try to go through this more quickly, guys. Why food freedom works is because you're not feeling deprived, because there are no foods that are off limits, unless you have an allergic reaction, or unless you know your doctor told you no, or whatever it is. Um, so you are getting to eat all the food. So yes, that even means regular sugar, right? Um, you're eating whatever, you know, so you're not feeling deprived. Um, so no foods off limits. Also, guys, your confidence increases, right? So when you go out to eat, when you are at happy hour, you're at a party, you know what foods to eat. You're on vacation, you know what foods to eat in a way that you can enjoy yourself, but you can still reach your goals. One of my clients, she was at a bachelorette party last weekend, and she was so nervous to go to the bachelorette party. And I was like, why are you nervous? And she was like, well, I want to be able to have fun and like, you know, eat the foods that I want. And she likes champagne like me. And I was like, girl, like you got this, you know? And she came back, we had a call and she lost weight again. I think she lost another pound and a half, two pounds, whatever. So it's totally doable. And she had pizza and like, I just told you guys, like food freedom, it's doable. And because she, she ended up, she had that confidence. I had to remind her, but you know, that the confidence helped. So she enjoyed herself. She didn't feel deprived and she lost the weight, right? And so when that confidence increases, what happens is your motivation increases, right? And that means that you're gonna continue doing this long term. So when people tell me, well, one of my biggest struggles is motivation, usually lack of motivation is lack of confidence, 
right? Lack of confidence in what you're doing, lack of confidence in your ability to eat foods you love and the way you can lose the weight that you want. And that's something that people really struggle with. And so that's why food freedom is amazing, life-changing, because it increases your confidence, increases your motivation. Lastly, why it works is because you're eating for your body, okay? You are honoring your body. You're eating foods that do you well, not just does well for the masses. So for example, I think I said this last week, Greek yogurt, okay, it is heralded as a health food, all right? You Google healthy weight loss foods, for, I hate Google for many reasons, but this is one of them. You know, you know, nuts comes up, avocados comes up, Greek yogurt might come up, all right? Lots of these foods will come up. But those healthy foods don't serve everyone, right? Nuts, for example, actually when I worked with a doctor years ago, okay, and this is something I've learned over the years too, I had to really limit my intake of nuts because nuts are really hard in your digestive system, right? So I couldn't eat a lot of nuts. And for years I was like, give me all the nuts because I know they're healthy, but they were killing my stomach and I was bloated, having all these issues. And they were also a trigger food for me, right? So I definitely had to cut out my limit, you know, limit my nut intake. Greek yogurt, another one, bloat like crazy. I can't eat it, right? But I was eating it for so long because I was like, it's healthy, you know, it's like high protein, low sugar, right? Ever and everything we hear, but I wasn't honoring my body because um, I was bloated and uncomfortable. Okay, um, Danita, I always think of you, girl, because you always said like your main goal was to honor your body. And that's what food freedom is about. You're eating the foods that you love. You're not deprived, but you're eating foods that make you glow and foods that don't bloat you and foods that, you know, you feel good about. And I, like I said, not all foods are equal for everyone. For example, I love raw carrots. I am like a bunny rabbit. I swear. I can eat raw carrots all day long. Sophie, one of my clients here in the group, she cannot eat raw carrots. They ruined her stomach. And we learned that in our first, right, Sophie, first like one or two weeks in working together that she couldn't do carrots. I can't do raw spinach. Like learning what foods work for you, right? So honoring your body. And then also aging gracefully. Um, that is another thing with food freedom because you're going to learn like what foods, like I said, are good for your skin, give you more energy, make you feel beautiful and alive right? And they're not the same for everyone. Like my husband can eat a ton of meat. I can't. That's actually one of the reasons why I gave it up was because it wasn't serving me anymore. That was my choice. Not because I was told to. No one told me to give up eating meat. That was my choice because I, was, I wasn't feeling it anymore. All right. So let's get to the big one. I know you've been waiting for 27 minutes how to eat with food freedom, but I wanted to be really clear about what food freedom is. So I think now that you are clear what it is, this is how to eat with food freedom. And make sure you're taking notes on this, guys, okay? So number one, and those of you who've watched my plant-based training before, this is gonna sound familiar to you, but how to eat with food freedom is to learn how to balance your macronutrients, okay? What I mean by balance is, you know, when you create your meals, right? What kind of carb and how much carb, um, protein, fat, right, goes into your meals, okay? That doesn't mean you're counting the, how many carbs you're eating, like how many grams of carbs or fats or protein. Um, that's not the case. I do recommend that you have a general understanding of protein. I think that's a good benchmark. Um, and what I typically recommend for protein intake, I'll give you this number at least, because this is pretty universal across the board in terms of sports nutrition, and any nutrition for that matter. Um, for longevity, the the stat that I like to use, the benchmark is 0.36 grams per pound of body weight. So you do 0.36 times your body weight. That is the minimum protein you should get. I think that's a healthy range, especially for longevity, for health. If you're not working out and lifting weights, that's a good number. Um, the higher range would be 0.7 grams times your, um, your body weight. Okay. So that's like the range of protein. Too much protein is not good for you guys, you know, and I could do a whole lesson on that. Oh my God, like three hours on that. Let's put it that way. Um, but that's my number for protein. Um, but it's more important to understand how to balance your macronutrients instead of counting them because counting them is exhausting, right? And then you're eating out and like, it's just really hard to manage if you're out and about. So learning how to balance your macronutrients. And there's a few factors 
that come into play for that. And I'm going to talk about that right here. But balancing macros is more important than counting them. Okay. The second way to how to eat with food freedom is to learn nutrition. Oh my God. So many times people are just so focused on what they can and cannot eat that, you know, and what's, what are healthy snacks? What are low carb breads? What are protein bars I can eat? What breakfast can I eat? Um, what are the low cal alcohol drinks? Um, what can I drink besides water? I get all kinds of questions like that. And guys, the truth is that those are short term solutions. Because let's say you find out like four protein bars that are like, okay, and then you eat them and you're like, these are gross, or these hurt my stomach, or damn, these are expensive. I don't want to keep eating processed foods my whole life. I want to eat whole foods. Those are not the solutions, right? So if you understand nutrition, let me tell you something too. And ask any of my clients this. Once you understand nutrition, you don't want to eat that stuff, right? Oh, of course, Lindsay, you're welcome. Um, once you understand nutrition, you're not going to want to eat the process. Those protein powders, oh my gosh. I get so many questions about protein powders. I can't tell you the last time I drank a protein shake. I don't. I really don't. I'm a whole foods girl. Um, I get a lot of questions about that stuff. And once you understand nutrition, you'll know why. All right. So really having a good understanding of nutrition and, you know, what's in these foods, what serves your body, what doesn't, you know, what kinds of soy are good, um, what kinds of dairy are good. It's all gluten bad. No. Um, you know, what is, what's the effect of wheat on my body? Um, you know, what about meat? You know, understanding all those things. Sugar, sugar's intake on, or effect on the body. Um, all the different kinds of sugar out there. I know a lot of you guys are confused about, you know, honey, for example. Well, honey is a natural sugar, so it's healthier. But on the flip side, it's, it's glycemic. It's, you know, it's a lot, a lot of sugar, like two tablespoons of sugar, or I should say actually, one tablespoon of honey can be up to 50 grams, right, of, of sugar. Um, so you gotta pick and choose, right? Eating for health is not always the same as eating for weight loss. Yes, honey is healthy, um, definitely helps with sore throats, you know, it's definitely better than white sugar, anything's better than white sugar. Um, but is it ideal for weight loss? Not necessarily. Agave, tapioca syrup, you know, sugar has like 50 different names, right? Coconut sugar, yes, it's healthier. However, it's not less calories and you're gonna need a lot more coconut sugar to deliver the same amount of sweetness as regular sugar. So we end up having the same amount of calories, right? Um, beet sugar, the same thing. So understanding nutrition is everything, everything, right? So not just like learning what protein powder to have, what are healthy snacks? And let me tell you guys something, <laughs> Um, a lot of healthy snacks in the market, healthy, quote unquote, they're not healthy. I had a client the other day sent me a picture of a bag of the pea crisps. They're like the, um, the healthy harvest, I think they're called. And they're like little peas and they're like crunchy peas. And, um, she was like, what do you think of this, Kristen? And I was like, let's look at the first two ingredients. Okay. It's, um, what was it? Pea, it was like some starch, pea starch, canola oil, and then rice. I was like, no, no, no. Okay, rice not so bad, but it depends on the person, right? It depends on the person. Rice can be a health food or a not health food, depending on your health conditions. So learning nutrition, you'll understand what foods are healthy for you and what's not healthy for you. So for example, some women I work with, you know, they've had fibroids in the past, PCOS, rheumatoid arthritis, right? Am I gonna recommend a, a, a high dairy diet or a high grain diet? No, because those are inflammatory foods, right? So health first, weight loss second, both the strategy. So number one, you have to learn to balance your macronutrients. Number two, you have to really understand nutrition. Not just like give me healthy snacks, right? What protein powders? You don't want to know that. That doesn't matter. You have to know your body first and what's healthy, what's not. Number three, number three, how to eat with food freedom. Um, eating, you have to understand purposeful snacks and beverages. Write that down. Purposeful snacks and beverages. So going back to the snack discussion, right? Like, well, Kristen, what's a good snack? And I can give you guys a hundred different healthy snacks. That's not a, a difficult question. The real question is, why are you eating them, right? 
Is it because it's three o'clock and you think it's time to eat a snack? Is it three o'clock and you just feel like munching on something? Is it three o'clock and you're starving? Um, why are you eating that snack? Are you heading to practice? Are you heading into the gym? You want a quick snack, you know, before your workout. Um, you know, what is the purpose of that snack, right? So how to have food freedom is having a purpose for eating your snacks and your meals. You're tuning into your hunger. You're actually eating something that is healthy or has a purpose, right? And I'll be honest here too, guys, champagne in my eyes and in food freedom eyes, it has a purpose. It's a celebratory drink. It's Friday at seven o'clock and I'm out with my girlfriends and I'm celebrating us being together and I'm gonna have a glass of champagne because I enjoy it. And FYI, champagne has less calories than a banana. And I was telling this to Elise earlier actually, and I'm not saying I count calories or anything, but just to put things in perspective for you. Um, so that's my purpose, that drink is celebratory, right? My snack at three o'clock, if I'm gonna have an apple, um, that is gonna give me some fiber, it's gonna give me a little bit of sugar um, to power my afternoon workout, right? Um, but if I'm not working out in the afternoon, you know, what would be a better snack for me? Or if I'm not really hungry, what should I do? Or if I'm really hungry at three o'clock, what should I eat? An apple's not gonna suffice, right? What would be a better option for me? So food freedom is knowing all the different options you have out there and what's better for you at that moment in time. And when you understand nutrition and you understand your hunger levels and you will be able to pick the right choice. Right? That's what food freedom is all about. Not that, oh, my meal plan says I have to have a, an apple and peanut butter at three o'clock. That's ridiculous. Like, what if I don't want an apple and peanut butter? I don't even like peanut butter. No, actually, I love peanut butter. <laughs> don't get me wrong. But, or this nutritionist that I have to have almond butter because peanut butter is a no-no. Well, it depends. For some people, it is. For some people, they're okay with it, right? So, it really depends on the person. So, wrap this up. Number one, you have to learn how to balance your macronutrients. Number two, to really understand nutrition, not just healthy food. This person says eat this. That doesn't matter. What about you? Number three, um, having purposeful snacks and beverages, right? So if you're going for that third cup of coffee at three o'clock in the afternoon, why do you need it? Just because it's there or because you want some more energy? What are some other ways you can get energy? Thinking about the foods and beverages, right? That's how we have food freedom. Yeah, you can choose to, but are we confident in that choice? And when you know food freedom and you understand nutrition, your confidence in your choices goes through the roof. That's the point. All I want to do for people is raise their confidence in themselves and their nutrition and their bodies. Because that's the trifecta, right? Most people come to me because they don't have confidence, right? And that's what food freedom is designed to do. Okay, last part. I want to wrap this up, get to your questions. What does food freedom, what does nutrition look like for me? How do I implement the food freedom and the nutrition? Okay, so there's a couple of factors, right? And you guys have heard me say this before, right? That I don't do cookie cutter, strict diets. That's not me, I'm anti-diet, right? Food freedom is anti-diet. So that's not what I do because I want you guys to decide what you eat, right? In a way that suits your goals. Um, and truth be told, how everyone eats should be different because it's based on a few factors, right? So what it looks like for you? Number one, it depends on your activity level, right? So someone that is exercising, let's say they're doing you know, an hour <clears throat> a day, weight training, maybe a little bit of cardio workout, you know, four or five days a week, you know, they can be consuming you know, more carbohydrates or just more food in general than someone who's only working out one or two days a week, okay? Or someone that's 35 years old maybe can get away with eating more food than someone who's 65 years old, right? If they're less, you know. And I'm not to say, I've met some 65 year olds that are way more active and way more in shape than 35 year olds. I'm 35, right? And I know some women that are older than me that are way more in shape than I am, right? So age is a number. Do not, I've had so many women, and men for that matter, say, oh, I'm 45, and my body's just not burning calories anymore. My metabolism is shot. I just can't lose weight anymore. Mm -hmm. That's a mindset. There are women way older than me, um, you know, 50s, 60s, 70s, that have lost significant weight when they thought they couldn't, okay? And some are in this group. They'll just give you a shout out. Hey, Jocelyn, awesome. Yes, I'm gonna get to the comments here in a little bit. Um, 
So activity level plays a big role. Okay, so how active are you? So I know online, you guys, and like I know my fitness pal and a lot of these apps these days, they actually ask you, you know, when, they, when they're calculating your like calorie range for the day, they will say, well, how active are you? Are you like not active? You know, a little active, moderate, act, you know, super strenuous activity, whatever. Um, there are so many calculators online, and I want to be honest with you guys. You know, in nutrition and all my studying in nutrition, I've also been exposed to like four or five different activity calculators, and then there's like a few other ones online. So it depends on what website you use. You might even notice if you go to three different websites, you'll get three different um, calorie ranges. How annoying is that? So it's really hard to use a calculator because the calculator doesn't know you. Also guys, your body, how it digests calories really depends on your gut health too, right? So for example, when your gut is healthy, you absorb and metabolize calories, nutrients a lot better and more efficiently than less healthy people. Okay, so gut health is everything. That's why I always say health first, weight loss second. Because you can be eating, you can be losing weight in a really unhealthy way, but that doesn't mean it's gonna stay off, right? And it might really not last long term. So you're better off doing it in a healthy way, right? So it's a long term, long term plan, as I always say. So um, again, your activity level is important. And actually, tomorrow, guys, in my fitness talk, I'm gonna talk about the importance of movement and how even just like a little bit of movement will be a game changer and how much more food you can consume. So make sure you join me tomorrow. So what does food frame look like for you? Number one is activity level. So really how much you eat depends on how active you are, how much you move, right? Um, number two is dietary preferences, okay? So for example, I always recommend to people that they eat according to their ancestors, right? Um, well, I'm not saying you shouldn't say that. You don't have to eat exactly what your ancestors ate. However, you know, if you, for example, are Asian, right? And a lot of Asians, for example, they cannot have dairy, right? Or they're very, they're lactose intolerant. I think it's like what, like 90% of the Asian population is lactose intolerant, something like that, because dairy is not something in their culture, right? So if we, you know, if you are of Asian descent, and you're eating a lot of dairy, and you're having ever side effects to it, maybe you shouldn't be eating it, right? That's why we need to listen to our body. Um, but, you know, it's also important to understand, like, you should not be told you can eat something as well. So, for example, I've, I've had some Indian clients that I've worked with, and they were like, well, how do I eat rice, right? And it's really hard to say to someone that grew up eating rice and is part of your culture, you can't have rice. That's not fair, right? So how do we eat rice in a way that you can lose the weight that you want and manage your, your health, right? So there has to be a strategy to that. So you know, it really depends on the person. It depends on their activity level. It depends on their, their culture too, right? But I always recommend eating foods you know, from your culture group. So I'm Italian, Puerto Rican, so I eat a lot of obviously like Mediterranean food. Um, I don't eat a ton of Italian food anymore. I mean, I love pasta. Um, love pizza, but the, the dairy ruins my stomach, so I can't really eat it. I have to be careful with the cheese. Um, but also, guys, like, for example, let's say you travel a lot for work, right? Um, and you are, you know, going out and about, um, and you're like, well, we're, we're eating at an Italian, or we're eating at a, a seafood place tonight, right? Like, what should I order? So that's what food freedom is, like, learning what to order at that restaurant. Um, so what... I don't think the point I'm trying to make there. <laughs> I lost my train of thought for a second. Um, so, or also, let's say like you're always traveling, like or like you're on your feet all day for work, and you don't, you're a hairdresser, and you don't have time to sit down and have a meal. Well, what are some good options for you, right? So, what I might suggest that you eat might be different than someone who has like an hour to sit for lunch and eat. I was a teacher for ten years. I had like, if I was lucky, and my teachers in the group comment below. I know there's a lot of teachers in the group. Comment below if you know what I'm talking about. I had like 15, 20 minutes, if that, on a good day, if for lunch, right? Because even though we had 30 minutes, you know, I had kids in my room all the time, right? And I was lucky they wanted to like hang out with me, whatever, get extra help, but they didn't leave much time for me to eat. So I had quick meals, right? I didn't have time to like whip up something. I had to pack something before or do something really quick. So how a teacher might eat is different than someone who has an hour or like a, um, a stay-at-home mom that has a little bit a little bit more time. I know you stay-at-home moms have a lot going on. Um, but 
what it looks like for you. It depends on your profession. It depends how you spend your day. Are you traveling on the road? How I might recommend you to eat is different than someone who's home, right? It depends on you. Also, it depends on your your beliefs, your core values, right? If you're a vegan, right, and someone says you have to follow a ketogenic diet, that's really hard, really hard. Because guess what? A ketogenic diet is what? 70, 65% fat. And vegans, yeah, you're gonna eat a lot of nuts, right? Avocado, um, <clears throat> but is that gonna you know, fill you up? Is that good for weight loss? I don't know, it depends. Um, it depends on the person, it depends on your activity level, all that kind of stuff. So it depends on your, your values. So your values, your culture, your profession, what you like to eat. I don't wanna tell you you have to eat Brussels sprouts and then you don't even like them. That's ridiculous, that's why meal plans don't work, okay? Um, and then lastly, guys, so activity level, dietary preferences and your, your choices, and then your health conditions, number three. So, for example, if you have chronic illness, okay, if you have arthritis, fibromyalgia, um, you know, I might recommend, you know, reducing your rice intake. Grains are an inflammatory food. Whole grains, you guys, for so many years have been considered a health food. It is a health food to some people. You know, I can eat rice and have no problem with it. But I know others that their conditions flare up, right? Um, some people have water retention and they, you know, rice doesn't serve them, right? Um, some people, for example, oh, you're prone to water retention. Watch out for those protein shakes, all those processed foods. Oh my God, that's gonna make you retain water like, whoa. So if you're complaining about bloating, um, you feel like you retain water, check your processed food intake. You're buying all those shakes. Mm, I bet something to do with it, I promise. So I don't really do this stuff anymore. I retain water, big time. Um, so, but some people do really well with shakes. I've had clients that have done really well with them. So it really depends on the person. So, but I would always recommend you understand your health conditions, right? So um, sometimes, here's a great example. I had a client that she was really, um, she was having a hard time losing weight. She was eating lots of avocado. She was eating coconut oil because these were health foods. But what we found out was that she, and when we worked together, she found out that she was really sensitive to saturated fats, right? So she was eating all of these fats and it wasn't serving her. I know Jaquel here in the group, she also can't do fats, right? Fats don't serve her well, so she does a higher carb diet, right? Everyone's different, right? So you have to understand your body and your health conditions. If you are pre-diabetic or diabetic, I'm not gonna recommend a high protein diet, most likely, especially an animal protein, because that can help actually increase your A1C, because if you eat too much protein, it's actually going to spike your um, blood sugar. People don't know that. Because when your body doesn't metabolize all the protein, if you eat too much of it, your body can only metabolize so much protein. So if we're consuming too much protein, your body's going to digest it as sugar. And guess what? It's gonna increase your blood sugar, right? So I had a client actually that he had a high A1C, he was pre-diabetic. And, and just so you guys understand something, and don't take this offensively, anyone here that's pre-diabetic, pre-diabetes is very much on the brink of diabetes, right? It's kind of like telling a woman that she is sort of pregnant. And I'm not, I'm just being very honest. Those of you who know me know I'm very blunt. I say things like it is. Um, and so it's good to be cognizant and to start making changes to your diet and to your health and to your life, right? If, that, if diabetes is a concern for you. But that's why if someone says eat a bunch of chicken, like we're on this special diet, eat a ton of chicken and a ton of rice, right? I see a lot of that in the fitness industry. Well, if we have lots of arthritis, inflammation, let's say you just tore your meniscus, Having a lot of grains is not gonna be great for you. A lot of wheat, forget it. A lot of protein, we're pre-diabetic, uh-uh, not good. So you have to consider your health conditions. So here's what I'm getting at. Food freedom, what does it look like for you? It depends, right? There is no one cookie cutter diet, right? And that's why when we have food freedom, when we understand nutrition, we honor our body with our health conditions and we know what foods do and do not serve us, right? We have this confidence that we can change our body in the way that we eat foods we want to eat and that we enjoy, right? In a way that works for us, okay? Um, so everyone is different and that's what I want you guys to understand. So if you want some help, okay, learning how to eat the foods 
that you love for your body based on your activity level, based on your health conditions, you can book a free call with me. And we'll talk all about your goals, what you want to accomplish, how you want to eat. And I want to be really clear on how you want to eat. What are some foods you want to learn how to eat? Um, what are some questions you have about certain foods? Book a free call with me, okay? CreateMyWeight.com forward slash apply. Because like, I'm already almost 50 minutes in here. I could go on for hours about nutrition, obviously. You guys see my passion about this topic. And everyone is completely different. No two clients of mine eat the same way, right? Um, and no two clients eat like me. Because it is not professional and it is not responsible for me to tell people to eat like I do. I can make recommendations, of course, I like this product, like this product, but that doesn't mean you're gonna like it, and that doesn't mean it's gonna serve your body. So it's my job to make sure that you're eating in a way that is good for your body. Just like I said about Sophie, she can't eat carrots, raw carrots, doesn't work for her, but I love them. And some people don't like them. So why would I tell you to eat raw carrots if you don't like them? My food freedom, you get to choose what you eat. That's the goal, okay? Ah, oh, that's a lot, woo! Let me take some questions, all right. Questions, questions. Lindsay, oh wait, let me go to Jocelyn real quick. Less of healthy food, more of healthier food, food freedom. Yeah, absolutely. And Jocelyn, I wanna make this very clear. I know you're actually going for your health certification right now, I believe, which is awesome. And this is a very common thought, right? Less of unhealthy, more of healthy. That is the goal when it comes to food freedom, with, with nutrition. But a lot of people struggle with that. They're like, well, I know I should be eating healthy foods, but I'm eating all of, I'm eating way more of the wrong foods more of the time. Or I'm only eating healthy Monday through Wednesday or Monday through Thursday, and then like Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I'm just like doing whatever. That's also a mindset thing. And it could also mean that we're restricting way too much earlier in the week. So for example, if I want pizza on Tuesday, I'm having pizza on Tuesday. I'm not, I'm not waiting till Friday. Life's too short, right? Um, so if you're one of those people that struggles with balance and moderation, make sure you join me on Wednesday and Thursday actually, um, because the accountability piece is key, right? Food freedom is a four step process. Today was just about nutrition. Okay. Lindsay, love your recommendations for the hemp protein. I love hemp protein, especially for on the go, not an everyday thing, but good to know I have the option to make a shake and feel full. Yeah, the reason why I like hemp protein, so just so you guys know, I, I am a plant-based eater, um, and so if I do a plant, if I do a protein powder, like I said, once in a blue moon, I bake with it more than, I, I'll make like protein pancakes, like once in a while, um, I'll do hemp protein. Hemp protein is, like I said, completely plant-based, um, it has um, healthy fats in there, omega-3s, um, usually it's the most pure form of protein, a lot of the whey isolate or just other plant-based proteins, they have, it's very highly processed, there's all kinds of added stuff in there. If you look at a lot of the hemp proteins, like the one I used was, I think it was, oh yeah, hemp, I think it's called, I can take a picture of it. Um, the only ingredient in there is hemp protein, right? Or you can even just get like hemp seeds. So Lindsay, for example, if you just buy like hemp seeds, you can buy them in any grocery store, um, and you can just make a smoothie and throw hemp seeds in there. They're gonna have protein. Also, too, guys, spirulina is another protein. Spirulina is like a, it's an algae, okay? So it's an amazing for detoxification. So I actually like putting it, if I do a green smoothie, I like to eat my food more than drink it, so I'm not a smoothie person as much, but if I wanna do a quick green smoothie, I'll put in, you know, two tablespoons of spirulina or two scoops, whatever the serving is, and that's gonna give me about eight to 10 grams of protein, depending on the brand. I like the Blue Hawaiian's my favorite. I get that on Amazon. And that'll give me 10 grams of protein, right? And then the spinach, if I throw in, um, or actually I don't use spinach because it blows me. I, I'll do like romaine, or um, I'll do arugula or kale. Um, and that, usually any green has like three to four grams of protein and just like a cup of it, right? So I can easily, without protein powder, I can get 15 grams of protein. If I do a, a plant-based milk with, you know, with protein in it too, I can easily get you know, 15, 20 grams of protein in just a smoothie without adding protein powder. And I wanna be honest, like I'm, not, I'm not against all protein powders. I've, like I said, I've had some clients who really well with protein powders um, and it really worked for them. It's just, I like to eat my food. That's just me personally, but some people love smoothies and Lindsay, I know Lindsay's a teacher. You didn't say you were a teacher earlier, Lindsay. Oh my goodness, Lindsay's a teacher. So I know she's always on the go, she coaches basketball. So she needs those quick meals, right? And a shake 
is going to be a better option for her than fast food somewhere or grabbing a wrap um, or grabbing, you know, something quick from Wawa, right? A shake will be better. So Lindsay, yes, a shake is going to be a better option for you. If you're on a road trip, shakes can be a better option than lots of uh, rest stops these days, right? I just actually road tripped um, from Delray Beach, Florida to Colorado, and <laughs> there are not a lot of options in some places, so a shake would have been a good option. Okay, so I hope that I answered that question. Okay, are there any other questions that I can answer at this point in time before I gotta hop off here for a call I have? This went longer than I thought, but I hope this was helpful. Was this helpful for you guys? Can you guys comment below if this was helpful for you um, in terms of nutrition? And I wanna be honest too. When I was planning this out, I was like, you know what? I'm leaving a lot of things open-ended right? Like a lot of things, you guys still probably have questions. Um, you might be unclear about a few things still, and that's okay. And the truth is guys, th that's how nutrition, um, and food freedom, I should say, especially is meant to be because everybody eats differently. Um, I posted earlier in the group, like in my house, like <laughs> tacos are completely different, right? Um, my husband loves cheese. I love ice cream. He could care less about ice cream. So, you know, if, for, if I'm going to tell him, here are the healthier ice creams to eat, you know, eat this way, he'd be like, ah, oh, no. So I can't tell you guys a certain way to eat unless I know you. I have to know you. And that's why, like, the very first week when I work with people, I ask them, what foods do you love? What foods do you hate? What foods are you allergic to? What foods do you have questions about? That is so important to me because one, I never want anyone to feel deprived. And number two, I want to make sure that you're eating in a way that you love so you keep doing it for the rest of your life. Okay? So, um, book a free call with me if you want to learn more, if you are interested in really learning food freedom and what it looks like for you, createmyweight.com forward slash apply. And I hope this helped you guys. Join me tomorrow for day two, which is all about fitness, right? And no, I'm not going to tell you to work out six days a week. Um, I'm going to share with you exactly what a balanced workout regimen looks like, um, why exercise of all kinds is important, and how it will help you achieve your goals so you can eat the foods that you love. All right. Oh, I'm glad this was so helpful. Awesome. All right, you guys, I gotta run. Have an awesome, awesome Monday. Make it a great week. I'll see a lot of you guys tomorrow at 2.30 Eastern. All right. Bye.